Lightning is a way of doing uh, Bitcoin transactions uh, in a way that uh, only the sender and receiver really needs to be involved in it and it doesn't need to involve this whole global network of computers. This means that we can do transactions that are fast, instant, cheap. Lightning is a better solution long term and it also gives a lot better uh, user experience uh, in, in, in every way. Like um, uh, There is no need for this whole confirmation thing, what is a confirmation and all of that. There's a lot of things that we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it already works. We're using it. I'm here at the Satoshi Roundtable with Sergei Kotlier, who's the CEO of BitRefill. Thanks so much for joining me. Happy to be here. So I wanted to talk to you about Lightning Network. So we just finished a great discussion and uh, you have um, amazing insight into this, obviously, with your company. Um, this is something that you've looked into a whole lot. So let's do a, uh, a, an overview of what is Lightning. Oof, uh, <laughs> Lightning is a way of doing uh, Bitcoin transactions uh, in a way that uh, only the sender and receiver really needs to be involved in it and it doesn't need to involve this whole global network of computers. This means that we can do transactions that are fast, instant, cheap and all of that. So it's really getting back to like the P2P level of Bitcoin, Absolutely. like an individual basis, Absolutely. individual negotiation, contract, all of that. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So how does the actual system work? The actual system works uh, using a type of smart contract ca called uh, HTLC, uh, which basically is, uh, it's a little bit like a multi-signature, like super simplified, but it's like a multi-signature um, address that is controlled by both parties. And then you just update the state of uh, how much goes back to me, how much goes you. So we, and then there's some crypto fancy ways of uh, making sure that nobody can cheat the other party and that's kind of the, the brilliance of, of Lightning uh, is in that invention. Uh, and I'm not going to go into to details on, on it, but, but basically it's like a bar tab between, uh, between two people and then those two people and so on. And there's a network of, mm -hmm. of these uh, decentralized trustless bar tabs. So on a practical level for the individual, if I were to send a Lightning payment, what would I need to do? So you need to have a, a special wallet, a Lightning wallet, uh, and uh, you need to get your coins into the wallet and you open a channel, mm -hmm. right? So it's a, it's a special type of Bitcoin transaction that you do in which you, you set up this, uh, this uh, decentralized trustless bar tab. So when you say open a channel, what does that mean? You, uh, you have to send money out first in order to create capacity? Something like that. So uh, a channel is, uh, like I described, that it's a multi-signature uh, um, address that has coins that belong, uh, you know, 90 10, 90% uh, to you, 10 to me, mm -hmm. right? And so you create that uh, by making a transaction. So you and the counterparty that you're opening it with, for example, the, the makers of your wallet or some well-connected node on the network or just your buddy, it can be whatever, uh, both participate in the opening of this channel and then you have it in place. Mm -hmm. And so over this channel, transactions that you do, you don't need to send them to the whole global Bitcoin network and that's where the efficiency happens if you do, because you can do thousands, millions on top of that. Mm -hmm. So Lightning was uh, was created because obviously there's been a lot of issues with block size, there's been a lot of issues with scaling, right. and so this is a way to add another layer on top of Bitcoin, uh, where it's not actually using the, the underlying layer, it's the transactions happen in the second layer, is that correct? Right. Why do we need this second layer on top of Bitcoin? Because if you have a global network in which, uh, hypothetically, everybody in the world participates, uh, the way Bitcoin is designed is that everybody needs to know about everything. And that obviously is, becomes impossible at certain levels. Mm -hmm. And so, and then you will at some point need to do, start doing trade-offs of different kinds, right? And there was a lot of discussions about these trade-offs and Lightning is a utility that also has a, some trade-offs, but I would argue that those trade-offs are like, like much, uh, uh, much uh, less problematic than many other trade-offs. When you say trade-offs, you're talking about do we increase the block size? Do we, you know, do other things to, to supplement or, or increase uh, capacity of the network, etc. Right, right. So trade-offs is always like, uh, for example, uh, for perfect decentralization, there's always like a, uh, usually decentralization comes at a cost, mm -hmm. both in terms of money, but also in terms of uh, like hassle of mm -hmm. things, you know, like. Okay, if you want to be fully decentralized on Bitcoin, you should run a full node. Okay, then you need to have a well-connected server, you need to, to have a couple of hundreds of gigabytes. And so, you know, it, it costs, right? And so if you use a mobile wallet, you're already doing trade-offs. Like you're, you're, you're doing certain security assumptions. And, 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 and most people are fine with that, right? You, you depend, depending on the use case, the, the beauty of, of this thing is that mm -hmm. everybody can decide for themselves which, uh, which trade-offs uh, you want to have. 
sort of. And uh, I guess another good thing about lightning in the in, in the whole political thing, which I think is kind of over by now, but that like lightning, it doesn't really force anybody anything on anyone. Like if you don't want to use lightning, you're fine. You don't you don't have mm -hmm. to. And if uh, you and me uh, use lightning and someone else, they're they're not affected. So it's about creating voluntary smaller ecosystems, but still using Bitcoin as the base. Sure, sure. And I think uh, I think like the way that we're seeing right now is that lightning is just a better way of sending Bitcoins around. And like I'm like. I think that we're, we're going to end up in a, in a world where like the bitcoins that are in, in hot wallets that, uh, that are in uh, uh, you know hot like not uh, not somewhere in cold wallets like most of those bitcoins are probably going to be in, in uh, lightning or lightning like uh, systems mm -hmm. just spinning around because it's, it makes more sense mm -hmm. right it's uh, like if you're an exchange for example and you run lightning uh, you can have fewer bitcoins in your hot wallet because you don't you don't need to have a bunch of coins that are waiting for confirmations. For example, and you can offer better user experience and so on. And so, so I think we're like at like sort of the the, the first little inflection point of mm -hmm. uh, of uh, of the S curve. Uh, there's going to be lightning ado adoption. So. so the idea with lightning is that you stake a certain amount and that's the capacity of your network. Uh, when you set up your channel, that's going to be the capacity of the channel that you, the amount of money that you could send through right, that channel. Yeah. So that, and that's, uh, th that's of course like the, the downside, like one, one of the trade-offs. Right, because you have to know in advance, you know, what is the capacity going to be and then you have to, it, it, and uh, how, do, how does closing a channel work? Well, the closing channel is, uh, also, super simplified, it, it is a Bitcoin transaction. <laughs> yeah, so you just broadcast that transaction mm -hmm. and that's it. Okay. So it's, uh, there's, there's, it, it's not, like pe people uh, sometimes when we discuss it, it's like, oh, it's so tricky, you have to close a channel. It's not hard to close a channel. It's making a Bitcoin transaction. We do them every day anyway, right? So it, it's, it, it's also something that's entirely fine. But today, like, obviously the network is growing at a, at a, at a high pace and so, Many people are just not closing their channels; they're mm -hmm. keeping them open. Like it's still, the state of the thing is right now is that we there's still a lot of things that we don't know, right? Like for example, uh, who's going to be uh, putting uh, coins uh, um, into these channels? Like and there's a certain degree of trust that's required there because, uh, in essence, I mean these aren't being notarized to the blockchain, to the Bitcoin blockchain straight away. So you're sort of trusting the channel operator to then notarize that later. Is that how it works? Yeah, in a way, like um, you're not uh, the, the counterparty cannot steal your coins, so you're not trusting them with the value of your of your coins. Um, oh, oh, everything is like it's a little bit simplified. <laughs> like there are ways in which they could steal your coins, but like the the design of Lightning Network may, m gives you good countermeasures to prevent that from happening, and that's sort of how, how how the system balances itself. But you still trust the other party to you know be online. It doesn't make sense to open a channel to someone who's uh, you know running it on on his, on his phone is going to be offline all the time. Right. And how does BitRefill uh, fit into all of this? Well, so BitRefill, uh, we're, uh, we're on a mission to make it possible for people to live on cryptocurrency, right? To, to buy stuff. So we, 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 we sell stuff. We sell gift cards, we do refills of prepaid phones, uh, bill payments, things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, if uh, you have Bitcoins and you want to you know, live your life uh, with them and, and buy stuff, you use BitRefill for that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so uh, for us, obviously a lot of our transactions are smaller than maybe many exchange transactions, right? We, we just maybe a phone top up uh, in, uh, in some countries, they go down to like t 10 cents mm -hmm. even, right? So, so on with Bitcoin, this isn't really feasible at the moment given transaction fees. And so you've started working with Lightning? It actually is feasible at the, at the moment, but, but yeah, I mean, obviously Lightning is a better solution long term and it also gives a lot better uh, user experience. Yeah, uh, in, in in every way. Like um, uh, there is no need for this whole confirmation thing. What is mm -hmm. a confirmation and all of that? Yeah. Like when you have a merchant, they don't necessarily want to be waiting ten minutes for something right. to be confirmed before they know that the money's actually gone through. For example, for example. So with uh, uh, one of the beautiful things with Lightning is Lightning has its own complexity. Lightning has always been uh, been something that we've uh, we've been keeping an eye on. Uh, mm -hmm. Even like even before there was Lightning, there was payment channels, which was like. Uh, the technology behind Lightning mm -hmm. that has sort of been always uh, prophesized that that's mm -hmm. going to be a thing at some point. So we've kind of uh, uh, made it a thing to always like be be first with uh, with uh, whatever new features uh, mm -hmm. are out there. Uh, in a way, it's uh, 
it's fun for us, <laughs> right? Uh, we, we're, we're pushing the technology forward. I tend to say that like if, if Lightning is a, is a motorcycle, like we, we didn't build a motorcycle. Like very clearly there's some really brilliant people that are mm -hmm. building the motorcycle, but we're taking it out to drive <laughs> today, <laughs> right. you know? Yeah. And the roads aren't perfect, but we're driving it anyway. Now this is something that you offer customers. How many people are using BitRefill and using Lightning transactions? Right, so um, in terms of how many people, it's a little bit tricky for us because we don't necessarily have user accounts in, in right. that way. I think out of uh, out of our volume, uh, we're, we're reaching uh, around five percent of our users uh, that are that are paying with Lightning, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, uh, I think quite significant. Like there is a certain bias, of course, that because we are visible in the in the Lightning scene right. and we 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 actively try to be the first thing that someone buys with Lightning, mm -hmm. right? So maybe those things drive it up, but still. Like uh, five we're very early days at the moment, so five percent well, is quite a lot. Yeah, uh, I think it's it's quite a lot. I mean, it's the uh, same order of magnitude as we do with uh, something like Ethereum or Dash or uh, so on. Wow. So it's, it's on uh, par with uh, other altcoins. It, it's there already, yeah, and uh, yeah, like uh, you, you can sort of uh, take it for what it is, uh, you know, with the different biases of, of our service and so on. But yeah, it's. On the order of magnitude, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's and, already there. And how, how's your experience with Lightning been? Are you optimistic about this technology? Do you think that this is something that is going to be pervasive throughout uh, the Bitcoin ecosystem? Well, yeah, obviously. I, I mean, uh, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's also, uh, it's one of those Bitcoin things where there's a lot of unanswered questions. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that we don't know yet. There's a lot of market dynamics that need to start playing out that are not yet playing mm -hmm. out. So there's a lot of question marks uh, that, that are ahead of it. And today, some of it, uh, some of like how the system operates involves a good amount of goodwill. Like, hey, you know, hey, buddy, can you open me a channel? Yeah, uh, sure, of course, I'll, I'll do that for you, right? Yeah, so and eventually we'll probably see a transition to an ecosystem where you have third parties offering right, these services. Because right. I mean, my understanding, I think opening a channel seems way too complicated for someone who's like just entering the space. I mean, right. just teaching them how to use Bitcoin alone is enough of a, right. of a trial. So I think that we are going to see people trying to uh, get rid of that friction, offering these sure. services and opening channels for sure. people. I mean, uh, it's not even impossible that, you know, your first uh, transaction that you get, say you buy your coins on an exchange, mm -hmm. so you're already interacting with the, with the company, mm -hmm. right? So when you withdraw, you might as well withdraw to a channel, and so you're there. Like, so there are ways of getting, the, like, there are ways of getting good user experience, but we, we're not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there's, there's still a lot of things that need to be figured out, and there's still a lot of questions that are disputed. Like, uh, we, we still don't know, like in the session today, uh, like, we don't know long term are fees on Bitcoin going to be high or they're going to be low. Like there's good arguments for both. <laughs> I can I can make both of the arguments. Um, but we don't know these things, right? And so it's still like a lot of uh, moving parts in there uh, that uh, like me personally I think like the best way is just do it, you know, do something and then you get feedback. Right. right? So and that's what we're seeing in the space, so much experimentation. These are all new ideas right. and we're seeing like it's competition in the marketplace which ideas went out. Right. And so we, we actually made a service that lets you, like, uh, like you mentioned, that there were going to be companies that, that open channels mm -hmm. for people. So we made a service that opens empty channels for people mm -hmm. so that you can receive right away. Yeah. And empty means that it has like, complete capacity that you can just use it all, uh, immediately. You right. don't have to stake anything yourself. Right. It, an empty channel uh, yeah, it allows the user to be able to receive coins over Lightning right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, and so, uh, and but this means that we need to stake some uh, some some money uh, into that channel, and uh, it's uh, uh, if it's like uh, another big service that's always online, then we're, we're happy to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. But if it just, it's just a user with a mobile phone that's going to be offline, then that's money that we're locking up, mm -hmm. and so for that reason, uh, this comes at a little bit of a fee, uh, and we, I mean, we we're still figuring it out, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we we made up fees, uh, see how it goes. Some people are complaining that it's expensive, which is good. Yeah, uh, prob exactly. Probably it is. Uh, maybe someone's gonna pop up and compete with us, and I, I, ho I hope there is. Mm -hmm. And uh, and eventually, like market dynamics will figure out like what is, for example, a, a good a good rate for a lightning channel, and what are the units going to be, and so on. How mm -hmm. is it going to work? Is it going to work on uh, on the friend system or on the business system where people pay for it? And is the is the business stuff gonna happen automatically behind the scenes, or is it going to happen or 
do you need, where you need to like, hey, this channel is going to cost you this much. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to do like, there's, there's a lot of things that we don't know yet, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it already works. We're right. using it, and uh, and uh, uh, it already works well enough so that a significant chunk of, of uh, people using bit refill uh, are coming in over Lightning. And so I, I think that we, we can get quite far with already what we have. Mm -hmm. Like Bitcoin's always been tricky. Like, right. <laughs> right? It, it, there's a lot of questions that are unsolved, and like. Uh, and we we just forgot all about them, like yeah. just addresses. What the fuck, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, so so uh, there's a bit of a le learning curve, but there's also a lot of things that need to be ironed out. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just like Bitcoin, it it already works, even though it's not finished yet. <laughs> And so BitRefill is a place where people can go if they want to be using Bitcoin in their everyday life, paying for coffees, paying for bills, paying all kinds of things, uh, and day-to-day -day living. Where do people go to find out more information? You can go to bitrefill.com and you can follow us on Twitter on, at, at bitrefill. And you can fi follow me at, at Zigamon mm -hmm. on Twitter. And you accept multiple cryptocurrencies and you also have, uh, you're offering Lightning Network as well. Right, right. So we, we have uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Dash and Dogecoin. And Dogecoin. <laughs> Don't underestimate Dogecoin. <laughs> All right, that's words, words from Sergey there. Well, thank you so much for, for chatting with me. Um, it's been wonderful and thank I you. appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Before you go, please subscribe and hit the like button. And a huge thank you to all of my supporters on bitbacker.io and Patreon. If you haven't checked out Bitbacker yet, please do. It's kind of like Patreon for crypto. And a final huge thank you to the sponsors of the show for making these videos possible. 